Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the new Edger Seaford F722 mini and full size flight controllers. In this video I'm going to go over their features and specs and then show you how to install and configure the full size version on my iFlight 10 inch quadcopter which hopefully I'm going to test again using this stack in the next few days. In terms of packaging, with both flight controllers you're getting user manuals that include the connection diagram, harnesses for connecting the flight controller with the 4-in-1 ESC, and for some reason the one which is included with the mini version is much longer than the one which is included with the full-sized one, bags with pin headers and silicon grommets, and in addition with the full-sized version you're getting a 6 pins connector that will help you to easily add a GPS device. In terms of specs, both flight controllers are using the same firmware and came pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.1.4. They feature 5 free UART ports, an F7 processor, an MPU6000 gyro chip, an onboard 16MB of memory for black box, and they can be powered directly with up to 6S LiPo batteries. In addition, on both flight controllers you can find connectors and on the other side matching pads, so in case the connector break you can simply use them. And on both flight controllers you'll be able to mount your ready receiver using pin headers, which is very convenient. The mini version is using 20 by 20 mm mounting pattern and M2 mounting holes. Its outer dimensions are 25.7 by 26.5 by 5.9 mm and it weighs 3.7 grams. As for the full-sized version, it features a USB Type-C connector and a built-in LED controller which can be controlled either using Betaflight or by this dedicated button. It is using 30.5 by 30.5 mm mounting pattern and M3 mounting holes. It supports up to 8 motors and in addition to a 5V 3A BEC, it also features a 9V 2A BEC which is important especially if you're going to connect it to the DJI Air unit. In addition, it supports two FPV cameras. By assigning an auxiliary switch to the user 2 mode, you'll be able to switch between them and pay attention that camera 2 is the default option, so in case you're going to use a single camera, make sure to use the camera 2 pad. The outer dimensions of the board are 37 by 34.9 by 6.5 mm and it weighs 7.9 grams. Now I'm going to show you how to install and configure the F722 flight controller. First, using pin headers which I've already pre-soldered to the Crossfire Nano SE receiver, I'm going to install it on u 1 on the sides of the flight controller. Make sure that everything is nice and clean and the pin headers align properly with the board. And now, using this provided 8 pins connector, I can connect the flight controller to the Ford FD60 Ampere BLA32 ESC which I've pre-soldered to the motors. Now, as you can see, the board is installed. I'm powering up the VTX using the 9V BC and I'm using UR3 in order to control it using smart audio. As for the FPV camera, I'm powering it up using 5V and since I'm using a single camera, I'm using the camera 2 pad. The GPS is connected to UR4 and after using a multimeter in order to verify that there is no short circuit, we can configure the quadcopter using Betaflight. Here I can see how the port section on Betaflight is configured using my setup. Serial RX is enabled on UR1, smart audio on UR3, GPS on the 4 and the ESC telemetry on the 6 Since the 4-in-1 ESC supports ESC telemetry, I've enabled the ESC sensor switch under the configuration tab. I've also updated the firmware of the 4-in-1 ESC to the latest BL Electro 2.7 firmware in order to enable bidirectional D shot. I set the gyro update frequency and the PAD loop frequency to 4 kHz. Since I'm using a Crossfire Nano SC receiver, as you can see it is configured properly. The GPS switch is enabled and I set its protocol to U-Blocks as it is the one which is used by the GPS unit which I'm using. In case you would like to use the built-in LED controller, enable the LED strip switch and then you'll be able to control the LED strips which you're going to connect to the flight controller either by using Betaflight or using the dedicated button on the flight controller. Next, after binding your receiver with your radio controller, make sure that everything works properly, configure your favorite modes and in case you're using two FEB cameras, you should assign an auxiliary switch to user 2 in order to switch between the cameras. Finally, define your favorite OSD elements, and then with no propellers attached to the motors, power up your quadcopter. Check the switch next to I understand the risks, and test each motor in order to check for its direction. In case you're using RPM filters, the error should be close to 0%. I need to change the direction of motors number 1 and number 4 and for that I'm going to use the BLL32 app on my Android device. First make sure to remove the propellers. 
Then power up your quadcopter. Open up the Bill 32 app and hit connect after connecting your Android device to the flight controller. Now hit the read button. And since I need to change the direction of motors number one and four, which are connected to EC number one and four, I'm going to change their motor direction to reversed and hit the right button. Using this app, you'll be able to update the firmware of the 4-in-1 ESC as well by clicking the three dots menu on the top right and hitting the flash button. This 4-in-1 ESC is already flashed with the latest version, but in case you would like to either downgrade or flash your 4-in-1 ESC with the newer version, just choose the firmware next to one of the ESCs and then hit the flash button. Now we are pretty much set. And as far as I can tell, both mini and full-size flight controllers offer a good value for money and great features, and I'm looking forward to see how this stack is going to perform on my 10-inch build. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos, and goodbye.